today what we are going to do is we're going to start separating the colonies into regions. I want you to understand, you might need to write this on the top of your notes, that the English have already settled the first colony, and that is Virginia. Jamestown, Virginia is colony number one. Okay, so I want you to understand that was the first colony settled. Now, as far as regions settled, today we are going to talk about a different set of colonies, okay? Today we are going to talk about the New England colonies. You make sure that you have them if they're not on your notes. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. I want you to understand that three of these colonies are going to be settled for religious purposes and one will be economic. New Hampshire is going to be settled for economic reasons. The other three are going to be settled for religious reasons, okay? And so we're gonna kind of step by step go through these colonies and what happened. The first group I wanna talk about is the Pilgrims. And you've heard about the Pilgrims since you were probably kindergarten, first or second grade when you talked about your Thanksgiving celebration, etc. So I want you to understand, let's talk about where they're coming from. The pilgrims are from England. They are a religious group called separatists. That means they want to separate from what? They're a religious group and they're called separatists. So what, if they live in England, what are they wanting to separate from? The Church of England. They are wanting to separate from the Church of England. They just kind of feel maybe it's just not for them. And so... They want religious freedom. They are persecuted. Remember, if you live in England, you must be Protestant and Church of England. You cannot be another religion. And so they are persecuted for their beliefs. We in the United States today really don't understand a lot of religious persecution because we have been under the umbrella of religious freedom. Okay, we're guaranteed that in our First Amendment. So to us, it's really hard for us to wrap our minds around it, but they're persecuted. So they flee to Holland or the Netherlands. When they're in the Netherlands, they're, they're doing okay, but their children are like beginning to act like little Dutch children. They're like, oh no, our children are English. We probably need to go and start over. And so they get a ship called the Mayflower, and they are heading to, and you need to put this down on your notes, they are heading to Jamestown, which has already been established. But the best laid plans go awry. The Pilgrims are going to find themselves landing in present-day Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And I want you to look at this. December 26, 1620. You might want to write this down. They're expecting to land in Jamestown, Virginia, and they are way, way north. Why would they have landed way north? What possibly probably happened? What would cause them to go off track? Yes. A storm. That is right. So a storm blew them off course, and they land in present day Cape Cod, Massachusetts, on December, December 26, 1620. Guys and gals, What's the weather like at that time? Cold. cold. They're expecting Virginia, which would still be cold, but not like this. And so here they have landed in a place where there's no town, nothing. Nothing. Do y'all understand that? So what do they do? They name their colony Plymouth because they're like, I guess we'll stay. To me, you have some choices. You either turn around and go back home, you either stay or I would just tell the captain, hey, let's just sail southerly until we get to Jamestown. But they didn't choose that. They choose to stay right now. So the first thing that they do is they sign the Mayflower Compact. It is signed by the men, highlight men, the men of the Mayflower. And it sets up rules and laws for the new colony. So... Guys, how many of you, when we did our create a colony activity, in your top four things, did you put create a set of laws and rules? Several of you. That was of utmost importance. And I also want to tell you, they did it before they ever got off the ship. They're like, we are not disembarking from this ship. We are not stepping foot off of this ship until we get some rules and some laws. Was this wise? 
Yes, it was. It was very, very wise. They, they knew they couldn't have chaos. Now, during the first winter, half of the pilgrims died. I'm sure at this point the pilgrims were thinking, God, we missed the boat. We thought we were supposed to come to the new world, but we're not supposed to. You know, do you know how discouraged they would be when that winter half of them die? Do you not think they all doubted their decision? Sure. But the pilgrims are going to be helped by a Native American man named Squanto. So let's talk about Squanto. Squanto had been captured. Okay? Um, he had been captured by, by Europeans that came to the Americas and taken back to Europe where he was kind of put on display. You know, then he escaped. Got in with some monks. The monks taught him English. They taught him a little bit about European ways. They taught him about the love of God. And they helped him get a ship back to the New World. So Squanto goes home. Can you imagine the hope in his heart when he's on the ship and he's, he's, he's going home. He's been kidnapped, but he's escaped and he's going home. And the hope in his heart, I'm going back home to my bride. I'm going back home to my family. And here he disembarks. He goes to his village only to find they're all dead. Now, what do you think they died of? disease. That is right. He comes back, his bride, his tribe, everyone's dead. Every body is dead. At this point, Squanto has to make a decision. Okay? So I'm going to direct you to this side of the room and I'm going to show you something that you may or may not have paid attention to through this year. So I want you to look at it. somewhere. This is a life lesson. You can choose to become better, not bitter. What this means is Squanto, he could have looked at those pilgrims and he could have said, you know what, because of you Europeans, my life is gone. My life, my world, you destroyed it. It's gone. I am not going to lift a finger to help you. Squanto could have made that decision. He could have been bitter, and it could have eaten, up, eaten him up from the inside out and rotted him. Squanto chose to become better. Squanto chose to have compassion and kindness and help the pilgrims survive. How many of you have, at some time in your life, had to rise above your circumstances? Sure. You have a choice. Life is not always going to deal you a great hand of cards. or You know what I mean? It's not going to deal you a great hand. But sometimes you're going to have to make lemonade out of lemons. And Squanto chose to have compassion and kindness. He chose to become better, not bitter. You need to memorize that quote. It will help you through your life. The pilgrims called him an instrument from God. So, after they survived, they set aside a day for giving thanks. Called it Thanksgiving. How many of you on Thanksgiving Day have traditional turkey dressing, etc.? Okay, yeah. How many of you have to try to do like two or three or four Thanksgivings? 